Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and help us out on Patreon if you can. We appreciate you. There are many companies around the world working on micro and small satellite access to orbit. But while a lot of experiments can be completed in orbit, watching all of your hard work go up in flames at the end can be a little frustrating. And until recently, returning an experiment from orbit was very, very expensive. And access to orbital facilities was extremely limited. The International Space Station has an external experiment bay called Express Racks. Express can accommodate up to 10 small payloads with up to 80 experiments at one time. Express is composed of a rack interface controller, a memory unit, payload ethernet hub, thermal control system, solid state power controller module, and a laptop computer. These racks provide power, data, video, water, and atmospheric and temperature control, as well as vacuum exhaust. These are all housed in a standard payload rack. You can see these all over the ISS. And the racks allow experiments to run in microgravity, with minimal intervention from the ISS crew. The most common rack design used on board the ISS is a multi-purpose payload rack called EXPRESS, which stands for Expedite the Processing of Experiments to Space Station. There are eight modular EXPRESS racks spread throughout the station's three laboratories. Each rack provides important resources, such as power, cooling, water, and data connections to support up to 10 individual experiments. The versatility of the express racks makes them ideal for conducting physical, chemical, and biological experiments in microgravity. The binary colloidal alloy test, or BCAT, researches how liquids and gases separate, or alternately, come together. Astronauts also study the patterns that emerge when solids are suspended in liquids. What scientists learn from BCAT observations may be used to create better stabilizers that extend the shelf life of food, products, and medicines here on Earth. Biological science is also researched in the express racks. The advanced biological research system has two growth chambers each with independent controls for temperature, light, and atmospheric conditions. The chambers are used to grow various organisms, like plants, small insects, and microorganisms. The Commercial Generic Bioprocessing Apparatus, or CGBA, enables automated processing for the microscopic study of protein crystal growth, bacteria, and cell cultures. The CGBA also houses insect habitats and plant development modules. These two examples of biological research systems will help scientists gain a better understanding of how organisms develop and respond in various conditions. These standardized racks were installed starting in 1997 during STS-94, which was carried out by the Space Shuttle Columbia and the latest one being Rack 11, delivered in May of 2020, on the HTV-9. HTV stands for the H-2 Transfer Vehicle, developed and built in Japan. This vehicle is known as Konotori, or White Stork, in its native country. This is an unmanned cargo transfer vehicle that began delivering supplies to the International Space Station in 2009. It has a launch mass of 16,500 kilograms and a dry mass of 10,500 kilograms, leaving 6,000 kilograms or 6 metric tons for cargo. It has a pressurized volume of 14 cubic meters and is 9.8 meters by 4.4 meters. The problem with the HTV was that it couldn't bring anything back to Earth, and it wasn't meant to. The last flight of the HTV carried unneeded mass like trash and some nickel hydrogen batteries and burned up after deorbiting. The HTV has been replaced by the HTV-X, which is scheduled to be launched in January of 2024. But if you want to bring something back from the ISS, you have two choices right now. The Soyuz capsule, flown by the Russian company Roscosmos, which may not be customer friendly to Americans or Europeans right now, and the Dragon capsule, flown by SpaceX, which is still running smooth, despite the company's owner's recent distractions from his space goals. But there is a new player in the space industry. 
China has been performing in-orbit experiments on its space stations and bringing them back down on Shenzhou spacecraft. But the Chinese have been exploring other concepts for orbital experiment return. These experiments involved the SJ-10 recoverable satellite. This recoverable satellite bus is based on China's unmanned FSW, or Fanhui Shui Weixing satellite platform developed in the 1960s and 70s. The FSW started as a film return vehicle used mainly by the Chinese military for Earth imaging. FSW was also once considered for a crude capsule design, but these plans were abandoned because of the vehicle's rough re-entry profile. The SJ-10 satellite has a mass of 3,600 kilograms and can carry up to 600 kilograms of experimental cargo. On the 5th of April, 2016, it first launched on a Long March 2D, also called the CZ-2D, from China's Zhiquan Launch Center in Guangzhou Province. Normally, the 2D can only lift 3,500 kilograms to orbit. But the SJ-10 does not need a payload fairing having an aerodynamic protective outer shell integrated into the spacecraft. It carried 20 experiments to the microgravity environment of space. SJ-10 went into a low Earth orbit at a 43 degree inclination, with a perigee of 220 kilometers and an apogee of 482 kilometers. The experiments covered fluid physics, effects of radiation, material science including crystal growth, neural stem cell maturation, plant germination, and most importantly, embryonic development in the microgravity environment. It turns out that while the physiology of living organisms has been studied in the space environment, the potential effect of weightlessness on the reproductive system in most species, and particularly mammals, is still limited. The SJ-10 satellite carried two and four cell mouse embryos into space and allowed them to develop for 96 hours in a monitored environment. These experiments were completed and on April 18, 2016, the SJ-10 returned to Earth and landed in Inner Mongolia. This makes the embryos available for genetic studies, allowing scientists to search for genetic mutations and methylation changes. This would not be possible without advanced equipment available on Earth. But while the SJ-10 is expensive, it is also very large and owned by a non-commercial interest. Let's look at the innovating companies that are trying to bring this service to market right now. Starting with SpaceWorks. SpaceWorks Enterprises is based in Atlanta, Georgia, and specializes in advanced concept analysis, systems engineering, product development, and economic consulting for a broad customer base. With the help of Aerial Delivery Systems out of Kissimmee, Florida, who are parachute and parafoil experts, and Earthly Dynamics, also out of Atlanta, who are automation and control software experts, SpaceWorks has been designing this. This is the RED-25, which stands for Re-Entry Device 25kg Payload. The RED-25 is part of a family of customizable re-entry capsules that Spaceworks can modify to their customer needs. The CEO of Spaceworks is Dr. John R. Olds, and Dr. Olds believes there is a good market for high-value orbital cargo return, like materials, medications, fiber optics, and computer chips. These could even be manufactured in an orbital laboratory and picked up by a red system for return to Earth. But I'll let Spaceworks speak for themselves. When mankind looks for answers, we often look up. The global space economy is looking up, way up, reaching $447 billion in 2020 with the commercial growth rate exceeding 6%. Today, it's an economy that includes more nations participating than ever, a growing economy driven largely by the commercial sector, with 80% of the market coming from private business. Products from space range from biology and pharmaceuticals to computer technology, communications, and advanced materials formed in a zero-gravity environment. The characteristics of these products are promising. What today's space economy needs is a cost-effective method to bring all these products and inventions back to the people on Earth. Enter SpaceWorks re-entry device, RED. SpaceWorks has been researching, developing, and building a return capsule to meet the needs of the space economy. Let's take a look. After pairing with a separate propulsive stage, RED shares a ride to low Earth orbit on one of several available commercial rockets.
after receiving the payload and performing a controlled deorbit burn. Red separates from the propulsive stage. On the wings of a guided parafoil, the capsule re-enters and precisely lands in a predetermined recovery zone. Space payloads and products are returned to Earth on demand. Our technology is nearing readiness for spaceflight. We've been working with government sponsors, as well as making our own investments in RED. We've tested our capsule, brought a payload from near-Earth orbit, and landed it safely and precisely. In addition to our RED-25, holding 25 kilograms of payload, about 55 pounds, we've designed other models, depending on cargo size. The future of cost-effective, on-demand payload return is now. Will you join us in taking RED to low Earth orbit? Learn more about RED and its role in serving the ever-growing space economy by contacting SpaceWorks today. Until then, keep looking up. Another company with innovative orbital cargo return plans is Outpost Space. Jason Dunn is the CEO of Outpost, which was founded in 2021 with Aaron Kimmer, Maiden Space co-founder and former chairman, and Michael Vergella, who formerly worked with Moon Express, Spin Launch, and Airbus A3. Airbus A3 is a giant innovation center in Silicon Valley. Vergala is also the founder of Free Flight Research Lab, a nonprofit focused on using paragliders for science, technology, and conservation. It is Vergala's paraglider expertise that has allowed Outpost to develop a two stage system to help satellites re enter Earth's atmosphere and use a guided parachute to land precisely where you want it to. Outpost plans to return satellites from orbit weighing about 200 kilograms by using an inflatable heat shield. Inflatable heat shields were developed by NASA as a possible solution to aero capture and re-entry on Mars. Carrying enough propellant for the Delta V change needed to land on Mars is very difficult. Carrying a lightweight inflatable heat shield that allows you to aero break with a very large surface area turns out to be a really good idea. NASA designed and tested the Lofted Reentry spacecraft. Lofted stands for Low Earth Orbit Flight Test of an Inflatable Decelerator, and it was launched on November 10th of 2022 on a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. Let's watch how this went with a video put together by NASA Space Tech. Live from the central coast of California, this is NASA's JPSS-2 and Lofted, which will demonstrate a new type of heat shield that inflates for atmospheric re-entry. These are all excellent concepts, but the company that I think has the most innovative re-entry technology is not from America. It's from Malaysia. Dr. Izmir Yamin is a brilliant scientist, working tirelessly to put Malaysia on the map as a spacefaring nation. Malaysia is a beautiful nation located here and has a population of a little more than 32 million people. Dr. Yamin was born and raised in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Since the age of seven, he's been fascinated by computers and flight particularly space flight. During the space shuttle era, he was amazed to learn that humans had actually been to the moon and back, and began learning about the Apollo missions. He also developed a passion for aircraft. 
As a child, he first experimented with a homemade newspaper kite and recorded that he flew up to 80 meters in altitude. He then made balsa wood hand-launched gliders that flew across 120 meters, graduating to homemade water pressure-powered rockets that went up to 150 meters and came back with a parachute. Around the age of 15, he got into coding and wrote his first program, a basic search engine. Then he wrote a software-based indexer to avoid the clutter of keeping multiple business cards, documents, and faxes. He won a series of Microsoft competitions leading to him personally meeting Bill Gates. He then went on to win state-level physics competitions with his rocket designs and began to wonder about sending satellites into orbit around the Earth. He was fascinated at a satellite's ability to map the entire planet and provide global communications that enhance the lives and businesses of everyone around the world. This led Izmir to pursue a degree in aerospace engineering. During his university days, he designed and built all sorts of propulsion systems, including pulse jet engines and solid, liquid, and hybrid rocket engine systems. He was able to launch over 50 of these designs, reaching a maximum altitude of 2.7 kilometers. In college, he also became interested in the design and construction of hydrogen fuel cells and used these to create hydrogen-powered unmanned aerial vehicles, which had a wingspan of 5 meters and could fly for extended periods of time. Hydrogen has a lot of potential as a fuel source for aviation. Izmir also built a single-seat hydrogen fuel cell-based urban concept car. When he graduated with his degree in aerospace and mechanical engineering, he was immediately offered a position in the aerospace industry as an aerostructural engineer for the Airbus fleet, working on the A380, A320, A350, and A400M. He then founded his own company, called Independence X Aerospace in 2013, and began developing several unique technologies, including this. This is the Microgravity Experiment Reentry Capsule, or MERCAP. MERCAP has 4,000 cubic centimeters of cargo space, and most importantly, a 500 watt power system based on hydrogen fuel cell technology that allows it to stay in orbit for up to six months without large solar panels. It also has reaction wheels and gas thrusters for reaction control systems and deorbiting, making it a complete all-in-one orbital experiment solution. You can load your experiment into MERCAP and throw it into orbit, complete your experiment, and come down when and where along the orbital path you decide. The MERCAP uses a ceramic reusable heat shield instead of an ablative, non-reusable. And we personally think that Independence X Aerospace and Dr. Izmir Yamin have the most immediately viable commercial concept. And his ideas have been getting a lot of attention, especially in Europe, where a lot of new space companies are being founded. But competition is always a good thing in the space industry. And we hope that all of these companies will start providing concierge service from orbit back to Earth, so that eventually orbital experiments and manufacturing will be accessible to everyone, Thanks for listening. Don't forget to support us on Patreon and stay safe at Astro Proterra. The Combustion Integrated Rack, or SIR, in the Destiny Laboratory makes it possible to perform a wide variety of experiments that teach us how fire behaves in microgravity. In the center of the SIR is a large round chamber called the Multi-User Droplet Combustion Apparatus. This 100-liter chamber has eight windows and five cameras that allow scientists to observe patterns made when burning fuels under different conditions. The five cameras are capable of photographing high-resolution, high-frame-rate images in ultraviolet low light and in multiple spectrums that are specific to combustion events. Several additional hardware components can be added to the SIR to customize its chamber for specific experiments. FLEX is the flame extinguishment experiment that utilizes the SIR to conduct various burn tests on gas and liquid fuel. It also tests the effectiveness of different methods for extinguishing the flames from the test. ISS provides a sustained microgravity environment, which allows scientists to observe the geometric, chemical, and thermodynamic properties of both the flame and the fuel droplet inside the burn chamber. Under these conditions, we can advance our fundamental understanding of how fuels burn in microgravity, as well as on Earth. This research will be used to better address fire hazards associated with liquid combustibles. The wealth of information obtained from the test in FLEX will also help scientists on Earth solve problems with pollution 
that is generated by combustion. The many different experiments in the combustion integrated rack will help engineers increase the efficiency of gasoline and diesel engines here on Earth and will also help us understand fire prevention and suppression. The human research facility racks in the Columbus Laboratory allow ISS crew members to study one of Earth's most advanced organisms, the human body. Astronauts conduct medical exams, track changes in health and behavior, and research countermeasures to reduce the harmful effects spaceflight has on humans. Our bodies are well suited to work under the force of Earth's gravity, but long duration spaceflight results in muscle atrophy, bone deterioration, cardiovascular deconditioning, and a weakened immune system. In an effort to understand these changes and how they affect astronaut health, the HRF is used to conduct several types of physiology experiments. For example, the CARD and Integrated Cardiovascular Experiments are two investigations designed to better understand how the heart functions in microgravity. Without the force of gravity for the heart to pump against, the heart muscle weakens in space. Scientists want to understand what this might mean for astronauts on orbit as they increase their time spent in space and also how this will affect their return to Earth's gravity. The Space Linear Acceleration Mass Measurement Device, called SLAM-D, is an advanced scale that measures body mass without the pull of gravity. It does this by applying Newton's second law of motion, which states that mass equals force divided by acceleration. An astronaut sits on a pull-arm assembly that moves with a constant force while his or her acceleration is recorded with a precise optical instrument that measures position over time. By tracking changes in astronauts' body mass over time, scientists can better understand their nutritional status while on orbit. The nutrition status assessment focuses on the effects diet has on bone health, chemical and hormone changes, and oxidative damage in space. Urine and blood samples are collected before, during, and after spaceflight for biochemical analysis to determine the effectiveness of both nutrition and pharmaceuticals that are being tested for maintaining astronaut health on the space station. Nutrition research is necessary for establishing proper food and vitamin diets for long-duration space missions as we explore destinations beyond low Earth orbit. Although the intended goal of the HRS research is to understand how the human body reacts to long-duration spaceflight, the added benefit from much of this research is that it helps us to better understand heart disease, muscle degeneration and osteoporosis, ailments suffered by millions of people on Earth today. The Microgravity Science Glove Box, located in the Destiny Laboratory, provides nine cubic feet of enclosed workspace for conducting a wide variety of experiments that require liquids, combustion, or hazardous materials. ISS crew members can safely use its rugged gloves to work in a sealed environment without the risk of releasing any small parts, particles, fluids, or gases into the rest of the laboratory. The structure and liftoff in combustion experiment, or SLICE, utilizes the MSG to study and work with fire in microgravity. SLICE allows astronauts to photograph and measure the shape and temperature of flames produced by various fuels and sizes of burner nozzles. These assorted flame shapes and sizes are then modeled to help scientists develop more efficient engines and furnaces here on Earth. The MSG is also used to conduct the BAS experiment, which stands for burning and suppression of solids. Instead of measuring flames from burner nozzles, the BAS experiment observes and models the geometry of flames on solid spheres and flat surfaces. These controlled fires are then extinguished in a variety of ways to look for the best strategy to use for suppressing flames in microgravity. 
Improved fire detection and suppression systems for use on Earth and the ISS can then be designed from this information. The MSG is also used to accommodate tests for heating liquids in the boiling experiment facility. A small container that includes two types of heating arrays, high-speed video cameras, and a variety of tools for measurement. Experiments in the BXF try to determine critical heat flux, the point at which a heat source becomes so hot that the liquid can't actually touch it. Interestingly, the information from the study of critical heat flux is used to design enhanced cooling systems. The BXS heating arrays are also used to study the shape and buoyancy of bubbles. The high-speed cameras in the BXF capture the growth, detachment, and motion of two types of vapor bubbles, small individual bubbles and larger bubbles that have merged together. Without the microgravity science glove box aboard the ISS, there wouldn't be a safe way to work with dangerous materials and conditions to carry out these compelling experiments. The most common rack design used on board the ISS is a multi-purpose payload rack called Express which stands for Expedite the Processing of Experiments to Space Station. There are eight modular express racks spread throughout the station's three laboratories. Each rack provides important resources, such as power, cooling, water, and data connections to support up to 10 individual experiments. The versatility of the express racks makes them ideal for conducting physical, chemical, and biological experiments in microgravity. The Binary Colloidal Alloy Test, or BCAT, researches how liquids and gases separate, or alternately, come together. Astronauts also study the patterns that emerge when solids are suspended in liquids. What scientists learn from BCAT observations may be used to create better stabilizers that extend the shelf life of food, products, and medicines here on Earth. Biological science is also researched in the express racks. The Advanced Biological Research System has two growth chambers, each with independent controls for temperature, light, and atmospheric conditions. The chambers are used to grow various organisms, like plants, small insects, and microorganisms. The Commercial Generic Bioprocessing Apparatus, or CGBA, enables automated processing for the microscopic study of protein crystal growth, bacteria, and cell cultures. The CGBA also houses insect habitats and plant development modules. These two examples of biological research systems will help scientists gain a better understanding of how organisms develop and respond in various conditions. Many of the experiments that take place on the International Space Station require either the use of or actually produce biological samples. In order to preserve these samples for their use in various tests or their eventual return to Earth, scientists at the European Space Agency developed a specialized freezer rack called MELFI, or the minus 80 degree laboratory freezer for ISS. Unlike most of the other research racks aboard the ISS, the MELFI racks are not actually used to conduct specific experiments. They instead store assorted samples at 39 and minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit. Each MELFI rack is made up of four independently controlled chambers called Dewars that are cooled by nitrogen gas. Each Dewar contains four trays that can hold up to 175 liters or 85 kilograms of plants, cell cultures, or human tissue and fluid samples. The plant specimens from the Advanced Biological Research System growth module are stored in one of the station's three MELFI racks. Because one of the primary areas of study on the ISS is human physiology, MELFI stores human samples like blood, saliva, hair, and urine. 
Properly preserved blood and urine are necessary for accurately conducting nutritional studies and cardiovascular system experiments. Hair samples used in the study of microgravity's effect on metabolism and gene expression require the Melfi's continuously monitored low temperature for accurate results. Thanks to the Melfi racks in the Kibo and Destiny laboratories, astronauts aboard the ISS can conduct and preserve the results of these valuable experiments.